So the the second season just started, and I caught the I caught the first episode. Um, and one of the reasons that I was hooked up with you in the first place is uh, the some of the the new tech that you're using in in this season. You know, both from a uh, FX perspective and the actual technology used to record uh, the different uh, the different scenes. Mm-hmm. And so I wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, we, we definitely changed things up a little bit technologically for uh, season two. So the when you guys are, are in the the game world, when you guys are in the game scenes, uh, my understanding was that everything's recorded using 48 frames per second cameras. Yep. So we were using the uh, Red Epic and Red Scarlet, and uh, all the in-game sequences are shot at a high frame rate and played back, meant to be played back at a high frame rate, and all the uh, in-world non-game sequences are shot at a more traditional cinematic 24. Okay. Now, I mean, this is this is kind of, you know, looking at, you know, the, the next generation of uh, game consoles playing things in 48 frames per second and, and really just kind of moving forward into that culture in general. Uh, but uh, what's the, uh, you know, what were the, the kind of technical difficulties there as far as, I mean, are you guys switching back and forth between cameras? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. a single yeah. rig that does everything? So we, we just shoot everything in 48 for those action sequences, and, we, you know, the, and the, the red can handle a variety of frame rates. The difficulty comes in the post-production editing and uh, exporting side of things. So, so Peter Jackson's like the only dude who does, <laughs> who's done it so far. Right. And we actually we found and sourced out like what they use. And they use, like, I think the machine itself, it's like a standalone hardware software unit. I think it costs like $250,000 and like literally comes with a human being to help you tech support it. <laughs> Like you, for the price, it gets sent to you in a shipping crate, and a dude is in there ready to help you set it up and like on standby for tech support. Like that's how hardcore their post production. So we don't have those types of finances to do that. So we were doing it on uh, Premiere, and there was a it was a technical challenge. If you, in fact, if you Google right now, like, hey guys, how do you export 48 from Premiere, or just questions of that nature, like the top like 10 search results are going to be us asking people on forums how to do this. <laughs> And just like nothing but silence, because nobody really has done it before. So we were very much forging new ground in terms of what we were doing on the post-production side of things, especially with consumer software and consumer hardware. So we eventually found a way of doing it. We were working, you know, we worked with like Adobe's tech support guys to try and figure out a way of doing this, and we finally did have a way of doing and workflow for it. It's not pretty, but it works. Right on. Um, so yeah, this is, and I mean, this was something that it's, it's really, you know, as long as you've got a system that can handle it, it looks really great. And otherwise it still just looks, you know, it, it still looks just as, uh, as good as, you know, the previous season did obviously with the, you know, the benefits of having some of the new effects you guys are using as well. Right. Um, right. But, uh, it was interesting when they first premiered, uh, the Hobbit, you know, cause as you just said, Peter Jackson's pretty much the only other guy that's been messing around with this stuff. A lot of people, you know, kind of came back and said that the 48 frames per second, you know, it, uh, it had a weird look to it. And, and that was... Yeah, yeah. With the entire movie, you know, being shot and, and then presented in that format. And you guys are, are flipping back and forth uh, between this. And it's it, it's a little jarring, you know, as, as someone who's seen, you know, both The Hobbit and, and this. Um, and, and, you know, the first episode of, of this season of Video Game High School. It is a little jarring, but it's actually... Uh, you know, really beneficial in this instance because you are trying to, you know, jump in between, you know, the, the kind of game fantasy world and, and what you guys are doing as the real world. So, yeah, well, you know, we have a lot of, we have some, we want to always visually set apart the game world versus the real world. You know, and it's important for us because at the end of the day, we need to make it very clear that's video game action, you know, because otherwise it's like, what are these kids doing and what are they they're shooting at each other and it's like ah you know we want to make sure that's like no this is a game this is very much video game type of action and this is something that you'd see in video games so ways of evoking that you know in the first season we had a slightly different color correct for um, that world you know like so that's our one way color correct is one way so like you know like the matrix for example did a color correct thing where the real world was blue and the matrix world was super green you know and that was one way, that's why I was doing it, but for us it was always a little bit obtrusive and not quite, you know, true to what games really are and what they look like. And to us, it's like, well, you know, the, the truth is, we, we, you know, we've been talking about doing some kind of frame rate split uh, since 
for even the series we shot the first season because we're like, how cool would it be? Originally, the thought was 60 24. So, because 60 frames is the game, you know, the, the gold standard for video games. Right. So much so that when, they, when Call of Duty, the new Call of Duty got announced, their first thing they said was, it's running in 60 frames a second on next generation consoles. Like, it's a big deal to have things in 60 frames a second. So, you know, technically it's not possible to do that, but it is possible to just double up frames. So when the frames are multiples of each other, so 2448 or 3060 or something like that, then, is, then we're able to accomplish it. So that was the sort of thinking um, behind that. Okay. So, and, the, and, and, and the Hobbit was, what was really interesting was, you know, again, this is all new territory. I don't think there are many, I think there's probably a handful of, filmmakers in the history of cinema who's even gotten the chance to or even bothered with experimenting with these higher frame rate, higher playback types of uh, types of things. And in doing so, you know, we're discovering really interesting things that happen when you represent motion at 40 frames a second. Everything from certain types of action looks sped up and everything from that to interframe, you know, in so motion blur and how does motion blur affect our perception of the image. And there's a lot of really interesting things happening there that we're sort of forging new ground with. I think it's and it's uh, what we're you know what we're proud of is that the reasoning behind it was not just a hey gee whiz let's try and show off what we can do technologically. The reasoning was a sound and it, the reasoning was based always on how does this benefit the story? How does this technology um, how does this technology affect what we're trying to tell the story that we're trying to tell and how can it be beneficial to that? That's always what we go back to and we're very happy that you know that there's a really interest that we have the opportunity to do a really interesting merge between emergent technology and storytelling absolutely are there are there other you know kind of uh you know technology setups that you're looking to get into in the future or are planning to integrate into this coming season well, you know, uh, in this coming season, so 48 was the big one. You know, we were talking about interesting sort of things about aspect ratios and how you can maybe dynamically affect aspect ratios in the middle of a, you know, because now we're talking about our distribution media. You know, it was before they were always worried about, well, okay, how does this screen, how is this going to play on a screen in a theater? For us, it's how does this play on every screen everywhere? So TVs, laptops, tablets, iPads, iPods, uh, iPhones, uh Desktop computers, smart TVs, every single thing that you know you can play video on is something that we that you could potentially watch our stuff on. So we start to think about how can we, you know, play around with that and and the opportunities that affords. Right on. Um, so from uh, from the show itself, uh, how's uh, how does it feel to to be kind of one of the the guiding forces for the show and then actually playing a character that's that's around not. Not all the time, like obviously not a main character, but but you know around pretty frequently. Uh, it's it's kind of interesting, you know, because I don't I don't really consider like you know especially compared to our actors, I'm not like an actor at all. Like I, I kind of I you know mime around a little bit, but for me, you know, it was always me being in front of the camera was more a necessity of how many people we had on set, and you need someone to shoot less and less of a hey I want to get myself out there and hey I want to be you know this 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 personality or this thing in front of the camera um so it, it is fun to be able to play around in this universe and sort of ham it up a little bit but i leave the heavy lifting to everyone else <laughs> all right no problem um i will go ahead and uh, and wrap it up here is there anything about the this upcoming season that you want to you want to talk about before we go um i uh, other than that we're doing it's six episodes they're all tv length they're all online free i mean i think i think it's interesting that as far as I can tell, this is like the first. Oh, I don't know. I, I guess you'll you'll have to. You, someone with better Google skills than me will have to look this up. But I feel like we're. It just seems like we're breaking ground with being like one of the first like indie TV shows. Arguably, you know, you have indie film that has their own distribution methods, but there hasn't been a television show that's 